President Moon Jae-in has kick-started an eight-day tour across three Nordic nations, Finland, Norway, and Sweden. Prior to his departure, the president has mentioned peace, innovation, and engagement as the key words of this trip. The president is also set to make a speech at the University of Oslo and at the Swedish parliament. Today, we go in-depth on the significance of the president's trip to these northern European nations, as well as what we can expect to see from this tour. For that, Dr. Kim sang chairman of the East Asia Cultural Project, now joins me in the studio. It's good to have you back. Thank you for having me. Now, this marks the first time for a sitting South Korean president to, to make a state visit to Norway and Sweden, and the second mm -hmm. to Finland. Uh, uh, what would you say is the most significant aspect of this trip to the th three Nordic nations? You already mentioned the uh, highlight of this visit as innovation and growth and also peace and engagement, the three pillars of the Moon government's policy. And I think in that sense, these three countries are very symbolic, very important, and very successful in some ways to, in regards to these uh, three issues. But I wonder whether the timing is right, because there are so many pending other issues at hand for President Moon in terms of uh, relations with uh, China, US, and even Japan, diplomatic relations, but also domestic issues. The National Assembly is still uh, not convening, and uh, there are tons of issues that are very uh, much at hand and some are pointing out whether it's the right time for the, such a visit to take place. Now the presidential office says this trip to Finland, and Norway and Sweden is linked to, as you've mentioned, President Moon's three pillar goals mm -hmm. of running state affairs. And uh, the key words so far, just as a reminder, were uh, the innovative growth, peace, and realization of an inclusive nation. Mm -hmm. How is this trip linked to these uh, key words, to, to President Moon's goal of running this country? Well, for one, Finland is very uh, strong in its uh, startup ecosystem. I think Korea is also trying to uh, develop uh, startups and would like to use Finland uh, as a kind of a platform to enter into the European market. So therefore, they will have all kinds of exchanges in terms of uh, young people, talented young people on both sides to, to cooperate and to uh, look into uh, establish themselves as startups in Europe. For that, I think uh, Moon, President Moon has uh, agreed to establish a Korea startup center in Finland and also the signing of an MOU on uh, exchanges between both countries of uh, young, talented uh, uh, people, and trying to link that with the uh, talent boost program that Finland has. And in terms of uh, Norway, of course, uh, it's very much uh, environment conscious, conscientious country and, and has uh, a lot to do with uh, uh, natural resources, protection of natural resources, and also we, it's very an important client for our shipbuilding industry. And also the hydrogen economy is something that I think the Moon government wants to promote. In terms of Sweden, of course, you have the, um, the welfare system and what we call the grand uh, agreement between labor and management is successful in uh, maintaining a industrial relations uh, that uh, Korea needs to try to find uh, ways of uh, uh, benchmarking. Now, the leaders of South Korea and Finland held summit talks followed by a press hearing just a few hours ago. Mm -hmm. How do you assess the outcome of the talks? Well, most of the uh, uh, agreements that had been reached between the two pres presidents is uh, not much of a surprise. Uh, one aspect, of, of course, is the defense industry uh, area, which was not highlighted before, but I think there is room for uh, further uh, development in terms of uh, defense industry um, economic exchanges. It was a bit of a surprise that uh, the North Korean issue has not been dealt with as uh, much as what we had anticipated before the agreement came out. 
So in that sense, I think maybe in the process of uh, Moon jae President Moon's stay, there will be further development on that area as well. Now, interesting point to note here is that some 53 South Korean startup firms mm. are accompanying the president. You've also pointed, uh, mentioned briefly about mm -hmm. the startups, but uh, this size is almost half the size of the entire economic delegation. Mm. Why the focus on startups? Because, as I said, Finland and Sweden are both, but mo mo more so in the case of Finland. Finland was a country referred to as uh, uh, the Nokia, uh, home of Nokia, until it collapsed. And in the process of its collapse, there was a huge uh, change in, in the, th the thinking of uh, f uh, the, the Finnish people. And in, in that process of the collapse of Nokia, which represented 24% of the national GDP of Finland, they have learned a great nation and innovation was something that they have gained as a, as a kind of a uh, aftermath of uh, the Nokia collapse. And now it is the strongest ecosystem in terms of startups and Korea has a lot to uh, gain from that uh, uh, Finnish uh, experience. And I think that uh, the 53 startup companies that uh, President Moon has accompanied, they have been uh, carefully selected by the Korea Startup Forum and also the Korea Chamber of Commerce. So hopefully it will help Korean startups to do more active business in Europe, where, whereas in Korea we have not been able to abolish the so-called regulations and, and restrictions that these startups are, are encountering because Finland is said to ha say the, ma ma the major important role of the government is to eliminate hurdles for these startups, whereas Korea has not yet been able to do so. And Norway is well known for its robust shipping industry, and as mm -hmm. you've mentioned, uh, it's also a big client mm -hmm. of South Korea mm -hmm. in that sector. Mm -hmm. What are some of the major points we need to watch out for during President Moon's stay in Norway? Well, one is that uh, President Moon is going to board the 26,000 ton uh, naval uh, munition supply ship, which was built by Teo uh, Shipbuilding. That is a, a major um, event. And also in Norway, President Moon will make a speech at University of Oslo, and it can lead to a, a new vision or a new approach towards the stagnated uh, and denuclearization process of North Korea and the North and U.S. and North Korea uh, dialogue. Hopefully that there will be some innovative uh, uh, ideas at, at uh, Oslo, but having said that, uh, it has to be something that North Korea as well as the U.S. and international community can accept. So that is a very daunting task. So uh, President Moon is set to deliver a speech at the University of Oslo as well as the Swedish Parliament. Uh, I think that would be the highlight of his trip actually mm. uh, because President Moon's previous speech he made in Berlin mm -hmm. uh, gained great much attention because he revealed uh, the details, his plans mm. for his peace drive on the Korean mm -hmm. Peninsula. Do you expect something that big to come out this time as well? Well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, even in Berlin, although President Moon has uh, declared and announced a, a very imaginative approach to North Korea, it was only when North Korea uh, decided to accept a more uh, conciliatory approach by attending the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics. So no matter how grand a vision President Moon will be able to deliver and announce, it all depends on whether the North Korean and the U.S. will uh, reciprocate. 
Now to Sweden, Sweden is one of the most developed nations in the world in terms of social welfare. And with the continuing uh, record low birth rates amid sluggish economy here in South Korea, uh, social welfare issues mm. are gaining much spotlight here in the country. What can Korea learn from Sweden's highly developed welfare system? Well, we have to understand that the Swedish welfare system, the basis, the fundamental basis for that is trust. The people trust that the government will deliver, no, regardless of uh, the government taking uh, their taxes. They, re they believe, they, they trust that the government will uh, give back more than they have uh, taken. That kind of trust is very important. And transparency also brings about trust. I think what the uh, Korea government also needs to understand is that we have to resolve our issues within to build trust and transparency for the welfare system to work as well. President Moon's notable itinerary in Sweden could you pinpoint As you major? said, uh, the speech at the parliament, and also this uh, very uh, symbolic and significant uh, meeting between President Moon and Prime Minister Stefan Reben at the resort called Saltse Baden, which is the historical location where the labor and management signed the grand agreement uh, in 1938 because Sweden also suffered uh, labor disputes, industrial disputes. It was very hard line and very strong labor unions. Even in, in 1931, the military opened fire to demonstrating labor uh, unions. So it was not always the case that uh, the labor issue or the industrial relations within Sweden was, was great. So this is in a way a symbolic uh, area re, uh, where the two um, the President Moon and Prime Minister will meet. And then from there, I'm sure that uh, President Moon will uh, obtain some of the uh, wisdom and advice and the experiences that Sweden has uh, gained. The main success of Sweden is that they have been able to, to uh, have a dual uh, approach, which is economic growth, based on free market and welfare. The economic growth and free market uh, and some of the, um, the side effects and the, the um, things that do not uh, cover all the sectors of society would be um, covered by welfare through taxation. So this is a, what they call the Swedish paradox because most economists believe that uh, economic growth, development, and welfare doesn't go hand in hand. It's, it's kind of contradictory, but Sweden was able to succeed in doing that. Now, one quick question before you go. Mm. Finland, Norway, and Sweden have all made great contributions mm -hmm. to maintaining global mm -hmm. peace, uh, and so it appears quite, uh, it's quite important for President Moon to gain earn their support mm -hmm. in, uh, when pushing for his peace drive on the mm -hmm. Korean Peninsula. Do you think he'll be able to garner enough support? Well, these so-called Scandinavian countries are in the peripheral of Europe. It's sort of small uh, population, not really uh, major players in the uh, European uh, scene. However, they have more influence than their size or their location due to the fact that they have always been heavily involved and very contributing to uh, resolving international dis disputes and also uh, uh, contributing to uh, global issues. So, and they f therefore they have always been supportive of uh, uh, the uh, peace on the Korean Peninsula. So it's nothing new. They will continuously support that uh, process, I'm sure. All right, Dr. Kim, thank you so much for your insights tonight. My pleasure. Thank you. And that does it for this edition of News In-Depth. From all of us here at Arirang, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you right back here, same time tomorrow.